this is Stone Cold Tech Support, and today we're answering the question what is the best value RAM for Ryzen 3000? Uh, we're using an R53600 for testing, and as this is a value oriented CPU, uh, it only makes sense to pair it with value oriented RAM. Now, I'm not talking about those horrid green PCB ones without any heat spreaders, but rather memory that has relatively loose timings at rated speeds. I did all of my testing with the same memory sticks, the G-Skill Trident C, which uses Samsung B dice. The memory kit is rated at 3200MHz CL14, and for testing the memory was operating at the following frequencies and timings. 3200MHz CL14, 3200MHz CL16, 3600MHz CL16, 3600MHz CL18, 3733MHz CL17, 3733MHz CL14, and 4000MHz CL16. Now, most of those frequencies are readily available, uh, but in a, I also tested at 4000MHz to see what performance was like when the memory controller ran in 2 to 1 mode, and now I was unable to go above 4000 uh, with these sticks. Uh, and I also tested at 3733MHz with CL14 timings, which is uh, about as tight as I could go <laughs> while still being stable. Now I have not included speeds below what the Ryzen 3000 has native support for, which is 3200MHz. And the CPU was manually overclocked to a static frequency of 4.2GHz, and this was to make sure precision boost overdrive wasn't messing with our results. The GPU used for testing was the Radeon RX 5700 XT and the motherboard was the ASRock X470 Tai Chi. I have tested with in 6 different games, uh, some more dependent on single core performance than others and some are more GPU bound. I only tested at 1080p at the settings I would be playing the game at to get uh, real world results. Uh, in their slides AMD claimed 3733 MHz was the performance sweet spot and 3600 MHz CL16 was the best price performance config. Now well, let's put their claims to the test. We're switching things around today, so let's start off with the conclusion and then we delve into the performance in individual games. On this first graph, the 3200 MHz CL16 setup is our reference point. And this is the average performance difference across the six games tested. So here the 3200MHz stick with a SAS latency of 14 was only 1.2% ahead the 3200MHz CL16 setup. And the 3600MHz CL16 was ahead by 3.7% on average. Best of all was the 3733MHz at CL14 which was 6.7% faster on average. And our 4000 MHz setup was only 2.3% faster than the base 3200 MHz CL16. In addition, the 3600 MHz CL18 was only 1% ahead of the 3200 MHz CL16. Uh, I did rerun the 3200 MHz CL14 test because I was expecting it to do better than this, but uh, my result was pretty much the same the second time around. And this was uh, with the XMP profile enabled. While the other configurations has a combination of manual and auto timing set. Now, what about price to performance then? Well, I took a quick gander at the prices through PC Part Picker. Now, this graph is total average frames per second across all six games divided by the price of the memory kits. So, uh, here the 3200MHz CL16 has a good lead at 10 frames per dollar. The 3600MHz CL18 kit comes in at 7.6 frames per dollar. Third from the top is the 3200MHz CL14 kit at 6.1 frames per dollar, followed closely by the 3600MHz CL16 kit at 5.7 frames per dollar, and last is the 3733MHz CL17 kit at 4.3 frames per dollar. The 3200MHz CL14 kit overclocked to 3733MHz CL14 is 6.4 frames per dollar, which does not change its position in this graph. You can potentially overclock the 3200MHz CL16 kit as well. I have seen many reports of people having success with Micron e die memory sticks, which is crucial DIMMs with the AES in the part number according to sources online. Now it's time to look at in-game performance. All benchmarking runs was done 5 times, with the best and worst value discarded and the numbers you see are the average of the remaining 3 runs. We start off with a best case scenario for the fast memory with Elder Scrolls Online. Here the 3733 MHz at CL14 was 14.5% ahead of our 3200 MHz CL16 setup, still not enough to justify a price increase of at least 60%. The 
The 4000 MHz setup delivered about the same performance as the 3200 MHz CL14 kit, but you're clearly better off with 3733 MHz, which delivered the best performance in this game. Next game is the Division 2 and the right. So this game is pretty much DPU bound, although we can see that the 0.1% low is doing better on the faster kits. So yeah, let's just move on to The Witcher 3. This game does scale with faster memory, and I should mention I did this test in Novigrad City, which is sort of a worst case scenario for the slower kits. Here both the 3600MHz uh, kits is outperforming even the fast 3200MHz setup. 3600MHz CL16 is here on par with 3733MHz CL17. Even with the memory controller in 2 to one mode, the 4000 setup is doing quite well here. Now let's see performance in Anthem. In Anthem we saw the 3200MHz CL16 kit outperforming the 3200MHz CL14 kit, but the differences here are so small it's basically margin of error. Uh, again the faster kits at 3600 and 3733MHz is doing a bit better, but there are no large differences here. So Let's check out performance in another Frostbite based game, Battlefield 5. So again here we see that the 3200MHz CL16 kit is performing better than the 3200MHz CL14, uh, but, but again we're talking about really small differences, this could well be within the margin of error, and probably is. The only thing that stands out here are the frame times of the 3733MHz CL14 kit, which is quite a bit better than the rest, uh, but on average there is not much difference. The faster memory are ever so slightly faster, but uh, there's no major differences to speak of. Let's see if Rainbow Six Siege can paint a different picture. Now I did this test uh, at ultra settings with very high textures at both the default 50% render scaling and 100% render scaling. We will only be looking at the 50% render scaling numbers because the other ones are completely uninteresting. There is virtually no difference between the kits. Uh, however, with the default 50% render scaling we do see better performance with the faster kits. Although the differences are anything but large apart from one result, the 3733MHz CL14 has quite a bit better frame times than the rest. In fact, the 0.1% low result was better than the 1% low result of many of the other kits. And its 1% low result of 211.2 frames per second is the only one above 200 frames per second. So that's quite good. So then, if you're looking for the best value RAM for your new Ryzen, 3300MHz uh, CL16 seems to be a safe bet for value. For performance, 3733 MHz seems to be a winner, and if you can tighten those timings, then I, I would suggest you do that. Even though overclocking memory can be a bit of a pain. Uh, I have actually included a link in the video description to a guide I have found quite helpful uh, with overclocking these memory sticks. But that's basically all I have for you this time. Thank you so much for watching. Farewell.